Andrzej Bronman-Lunt here from Bronholm Tours. I'm in Poland in a town called Kolobzig and uh, I'm actually going to take you for a walk along the marina and the beach and, uh, and around uh, the lighthouse. So I hope you enjoy the tour. In front of us is the ferry that we actually came over on from, uh, from Bornholm and uh, it's just boarding at the moment. It's going to uh, sail off to Bornholm in about 15 minutes and uh, we'll actually be taking this ferry back to Bornholm tomorrow. Um, but I'm just going to turn around slowly and uh, walk uh, along the uh, wharf uh, towards the beach uh, and out to the pier taking in some of the sights as, uh, as we go along and there's some uh, quite interesting uh, tourist ships here uh, I love this Viking ship that uh, you can take uh, up and down the harbour and it's quite an extensive harbour Kolobzig, Kolobzig harbour it has a fort and uh, sits, uh, as I said, on the um, east side of the Baltic Sea, directly over from Sweden, um, with uh, Bornholm sort of sitting in the middle. So we're just going to turn right here and uh, go and have a look at the lighthouse. It's quite an impressive structure with cannons and and uh, also obviously the light itself. And just uh, have a little look at this handsome chap. He's a Polish naval commander on the right. <clears throat> looking out to sea from the port Captain Stanislaw Moskowski from 1903 to 1952 so he wasn't very old when he died he was a well-deserved officer of the Polish Navy he oversaw the construction of Polish ships in the French and English shipyards during the defence of the coast in 1939 he commanded a group of gunboats. After returning from German captivity on the 8th of June 1945 he began work as the first Polish harbour master of the Kolobzig port. Later he was the organiser and first commander of the Naval Officers School, Chief of the General Staff of the Navy and finally the commander of the fleet. After 1949, there was a period of Stalinization of public life in Poland. As a result, dozens of generals and senior officers were arrested. They were placed behind false accusations and many were executed. Far out. Stanislaw Myskowski was arrested on the 20th of October in 1950 and on the 16th of December in 1952 a death sentence was carried out on him. After the so-called Polish October in 1956 he was completely rehabilitated. Through the efforts of the League of Maritime and River on the 29th of August 2003 a port square was named after Captain Stanislaw Myskowski. On the 23rd of June 2007 the monument was put up and on the 26th of November 2009 a book was published about the captain. Gee, what a rough life. And uh, I actually think it's quite indicative of what this area has been through. Um, <coughs> up until uh, 1945 this part of Poland was actually a uh, part of Germany and um, I've heard some of the Bonholmers when they talk about this town, they call it Kolberg, which is a much more German, or a, the German name for, for this town, Kolberg. And um, of course it was 
this port that the uh, German soldiers that were captured after the surrender of Bonholm to the Russians were brought to and they were exchanged with Russian soldiers who went back to Bonholm and occupied Bonholm for an extra year after the Second World War. Bonholm wasn't actually liberated until 1946. And the German soldiers were transported off to Russian concentration camps in Siberia. So this area's had a pretty harsh modern history. So you can see the lighthouse has a fine view out to past the exit of the harbour. And if you keep sailing due east, you'll eventually hit Bonholm. The ferry takes about uh, five hours. It's not a uh, relaxing journey. <laughs> the ferry is, uh, so we're going to actually walk along the, uh, the beach and out onto the pier and then back and uh, along the boardwalk and back up here to, or along the foreshore there, uh, back here towards the uh, lighthouse and end the tour here. It's a lovely uh, calm day today. Got a good map of the area. In fact a map of the whole coast Along, Pol along the Polish coast here and uh, there on the left is the border with Germany. And uh, so this was uh, a fort before it was a lighthouse. Obviously it's a pretty uh, good spot for a fort. You can see the cannons sticking out of the cannon ports there. Fort Munna. The first fortification work was built here by Imperial soldiers occupying Kolobzeg in 1627, which was the Thirty Years' War. It was a blockhouse or earth wooden combat bunker. Upon its destruction in a storm in 1709, a rampart was built here to a specification drawn by Captain Engineer Fraundorf. However, the experience of the Seven Years' War revealed the weak points of the fortifications. Hence, during successive modernisation of the fortress in 1770 to 1774, a tower, <coughs> a fort following French patterns, was built on the alignment of the former rampart. It is a three-level circular brick tower which used to be covered with earth. The cellar with a well served as a warehouse, the basement for firing of a given weapon. The fort up to the cellar was encircled with an earthwork in the shape of two bastions on the land side and strengthened with a palisade, of palisade on the tree si seaside. Tree side, seaside. During the last modernisation of the fortress in 1832 to 1836, the work defending entry to the port was slightly improved. The earthwork encircling the fort began to be diminished and encircled with a brick wall. In 1945, the last part of the wall on, su on the southern side was built. A terrace um, was made around the fort, and in 1899, a lighthouse was built on the earthwork next to the fort. After 10 years, it was replaced with a new one, which was destroyed during the fights in March 1945. A new lighthouse was built in exactly the same year, however, on the alignment of the fort. Since then, the old fort and the post-war lighthouse have been one building. So obviously, uh, the lighthouse serves as a vantage point. Let's go over here and have a look at this lovely garden. And then just going to turn around and uh, walk down onto the beach and uh, go for a walk along the beach to the pier.
So collared brisket is actually a really, uh, a really uh, nice city actually to visit. It's very safe and clean and there's so much history uh, around this town. It's been in the so many hands of so many different rulers for thousands of years. on the west coast of what used to be common area. The people of this town have certainly seen a lot of turmoil and war over the millennium. Now it's a very peaceful town with a really uh, magnificent cathedral and interesting town centre. A peaceful coastline and some very, very nice parks with very well established trees so there are two more films on Kolobzig there's the Kolobzig forest walks or park walks or Kolobzig park walks and uh, Kolobzig town centre walk as well so there's three films in the series on Kolobzik or walking around Kolobzik. So check those films out if you want to see a little bit more of Kolobzik and understand what the town is all about. Right, so now we will uh, head back towards the lighthouse. <clears throat> We're going to walk along the marina, which is up uh, on top of the beach. There's quite an interesting monument uh, about halfway along, which seems to be about marriage. So I want to go and see what that's all about. This is just really a lovely, a lovely spot to come and the weather's a bit overcast and it was a very wet day yesterday. Um, but you can imagine that <coughs> when the sun is shining, this is a very 
pleasant place to be. There's a lot of activities and different things going on as well. It's a very busy town. Uh, and it's, uh, it certainly um, is enjoyed by many Polish people, by the local population as well, not just foreigners coming from, from Denmark and, and Germany. There's a lot of Germans here on holiday, which is fairly obvious, being sharing a border and with a wonderful coastline like this. Why wouldn't you come here for a holiday? And uh, actually, the town um, has received a national recognition as a health spa town, as a health resort. So uh, tourism and, and health spas are really a mainstay of, of the town's economy. And all over the uh, town, there's signs. If we just look off to the left here, there's a massive sign over there. It's in Polish, sadly. Um, just about the different ferries that sail out of Poland. There's this, or sail out of the port here at Kolobczyk. And um, it's just uh, really interesting. Actually, you can see on the balloon there, Kolbea. That's the German, it's in German, the information about that uh, area there. And they, when, they, when they write the information in German, they actually translate the name of the town into the German name for it. And uh, as I was saying, there's information signs everywhere. And many of them are in Polish, German and English, which is fantastic. Uh, a lot of them are simply in Polish, just informing the local population about various things, the types of fish that are um, fished out of the waters here, the types of birds that are around, the buildings. It's really excellent and on the left here is just an example of one of the parks I was talking about. There's a lovely path in the middle of this park that I walked down in the Kolobczyk Parks Walk. And uh, it's just wonderful the amount of green there is um, in this town. It's quite surprising I didn't come across any of that mentioned in any reading when I was researching for the for the town. It was more about the lighthouse and the, the pier seemed to be the two main and interesting attractions. But uh, the cathedral and the, the town centre with its lovely parks is quite an interesting site as well. So this is the monument I wanted to have a closer look at. And it says, the memorial marriage to the sea. The ceremony of marriage to the sea originated from the medieval Venice. It symbolizes a particular man's relation to the sea as compared to the institution of marriage. In Poland, the first such ceremony of marriage to the sea took place uh, on February the 10th, 1920 in Puk, 
after Poland regained its independence and access to the sea. The symbolic ring was thrown into the sea by the commander of the Pomeranian Front, Major General Josef Heller, who was accompanied by the representatives of Poland's authorities. The second ceremony of marriage to the sea took place on March 18, 1945, in Kolobczyk, next to the ruins of the lighthouse after the town was captured by the Polish army. Corporal Franciszek Niedzielio, sorry Polish people, that's a terrible pronunciation, threw the symbolic ring into the sea. The delegations of the 1st and 2nd Polish armies, which fought on the Eastern Front, participated in that solemn event. The oath of the fidelity to the sea was taken by all Polish army units, which were then present on the Baltic coast. The memorial to Poland's marriage to the sea in Kolobczyk, in the shape of the unfolded flag, was unveiled on November 3, 1963 and it was designed by Wichter Tolkien. So I think for, for many of us, we can understand that because um, growing up next to the sea or next to the ocean has just been an integral part of of most people's lives. Even, even if you live inland and you live far away from the sea or far away from the ocean, normally the town you live in or the city you live on is built on some sort of water body, whether it's a river or a lake. There's always, there's always an association with water. It's just such a massively important thing to us as humans. And I can certainly imagine that if I didn't have the sea nearby, like we do on Bornholm, it's everywhere because we're such a little island, but also having grown up in Perth in Western Australia where we have the Swan River that feeds out to the Indian Ocean and growing up next to the Indian Ocean, I can't, I can't imagine not, not having a relationship with with the sea, with the ocean. It's such an integral part of our existence and just means so much in terms of, of grounding us and, and who we are and what we're doing here. So we're back at the lighthouse now. Hope you enjoyed that tour. This is Bronwyn Lund from Bronholm Tours signing off. Bye for now.